This is stressful. Oh, Twitter's blowing up. That address. How long does it take to send an email? That, that was my bad. Why would you choose not to press that button? So many security layers. <laughs> That's still Twitter blowing up. The LP lock is not automatic, but automated. Automated and automatic are not the same thing. But you gotta buy the lows. 44% down in 24 hours. Oof, so many apps to go through. Why does it take so long? What's going on here? We officially invite everyone to the live stream later where questions and answers will take place. Where's my withdrawal? There we go. There we go. Successfully withdrawn. Swap. Confirm. Boom. Transaction submitted. We're in. Woo! That was stressful. Oh. Okay. What is up, YouTube? It's been a while since my last video, but I think I have a lot of exciting experiences and knowledge to share. Well, not knowledge. I don't have knowledge to share today. Some cool updates. Uh, we got an update on the mining rig, how that's been performing. It's kind of been on and off over the last while. Shut up, fuck. The phone's blowing up. So the mining rig's been on and off for the last while. Uh, it's done pretty much what I expected it to do, but I haven't left it running for as long as I wanted to. There were some issues there. And then I've also been getting into some other cryptocurrency adventures that I want to share with everyone today. And yeah, I have some pretty big plans for the mining that I'll also be sharing at the end of the video. And also, one of the main reasons that I've taken so long to get this video out, we may have adopted two of the world's cutest little kittens. So, you best believe they're gonna feature in this video. Okay, cool, so essentially, I think it's been about two months since I made that last video. So it means we've been mining on this current mining rig for about two months. Now, I ran into some issues with that mining rig in that the power supply started sounding a little bit suspect. So I, I started hearing these serious grinding noises from the power supply and it would go away and come back and go away and come back, but every time it went away, you would worry that the power supply was was gonna pop, it was on its way out. Um, and after doing a bit of research, I realized that, you know, with a certain quality and a certain manufacturer of power supply, if that power supply had to fail, it could potentially mean that I'd be damaging the other components that it was supplying power to. So for a long period of time, I decided just to leave it and not mine anything at all so the pc was off for a while and i kind of honestly just forgot about it for about a week or two probably then after a while i decided to put some money into a new power supply so i bought a new power supply while that was on its way to me a friend of mine asked me you know would i be interested in buying a couple components from him and i ended up buying his entire pc uh you know i've, I've can't really recall the exact specs of the PC, but I remember thinking at the time it was a fair price and I have nothing but trust for the guy. So I bought the PC, I put the, the new or the graphics card in that PC and I started mining again. So if we can jump into the PC here, I can actually show you some of the results from the mining. For those of you that haven't seen my previous video, I'll leave a link up here somewhere to that video just to lay the groundwork for kind of where we are today in the mining sense. In the previous video I mentioned that I was using Phoenix Miner to mine Ethereum on the Alienware laptop. Uh, I've since stopped that mining. Uh, I was just, the laptop is a little bit more temperature sensitive and it's something that I want to monitor the whole time and it kind of actually just takes up a lot of space because you can't really use the laptop while it's mining so Taking up time and space, kind of not what I was going for at the time. So I've stopped the mining, but just to show you some of the results there, um, I was using Phoenix Miner to mine to Sparkpool. Uh, and here we can see $94.26 uh, 
or 0.03978 Ethereum income that I earned on the 28th of March. And here we can see on the other side, 0.0397 Ethereum paid into my Coinbase account. I could continue mining on that laptop, but I've chosen not to. I would just prefer to build out a, a dedicated mining PC and use it, free up the laptop for, for other users. And when it comes to the main mining rig that I set up in the previous video, I had to take a slightly different route. It, it can get a little bit complicated, but essentially the RAM, the capacity of the, the graphics card that I was using was theoretically too low to mine in the sense that traditional mining software would want it to. Without getting too complicated, it was a four gig card and the Ethereum DAG is now bigger than four gig. So you needed a creative solution to get around that. And the main one that I found was using Hive OS um, and using a miner called LOL Miner through Hive OS to achieve proper mining rate. So here we can see I've switched this PC off today just because it's quite noisy while I'm recording, but it was getting 13.18 mega hash. Um, sometimes it gives me up to 13.6 mega hash. Really performing well. And if I can go into the earnings for this entire rig, you can see here 0 0.0241 Ethereum pending to be paid out on this rig. Um, if I just change these all to monthly. And here you can see there are a couple dips thanks to a little thing known as load shedding in South Africa where there is no power. And once the power cuts, I have to manually come and switch the system on again before I can continue mining. In short, I have 0.0241 Ethereum just pending there. Hive OS works a little bit differently from the Hive on pool. I have to reach 0.1 Ethereum before it will pay out into, into this Coinbase wallet of mine. Um, Spark pools work slightly differently where if you stop mining for more than a week, they'll pay out on the 28th or something like that. So I switched off the system and they paid out on the 28th of March. So I could actually secure that Ethereum. But here it's, the rules are a little bit different. So currently this is 0.024 on Ethereum. I think we can actually go and view this on the Hive on pool. It should give us a, a dollar amount. Um, so yes, the pending payment is 57.26 US dollars. So in my previous video, I mentioned that I was earning about 34, 35 dollars per month. That obviously fluctuates and I actually haven't been running the PC for the full past two months. So this 57 US dollars is kind of exactly what I would expect from the on and off two months worth of, of running. And all in all, again, still I'm, I'm really happy with that. Uh, as I said, I didn't pay much for the card. I paid about a thousand, I paid 1,500 Rand for the card. And if we look currently 57.26 US dollars to Rand, uh, I paid a thousand five hundred bucks for the card. Uh, I've made 817 bucks from it so far, kind of on and off, not really committed to it. So this is a, it was a good proof of concept. Uh, at the end of the video, I'm gonna kind of lay out what my plans are for mining in the future, what my outlook is, what some of the risks are, and why I potentially don't really care about all of those risks. But that's my mining update. Now on to more of my other crypto adventures. So even though I have in the past played around with a little bit of cryptocurrency, kind of just holding a little bit of Bitcoin, a little bit of Ethereum, it firstly was never a substantial amount of money and secondly I never kind of speculated on it. I wasn't hoping to make double, triple my money in, in the short term. Probably about a month ago a friend of mine told me about a cryptocurrency called Safe Moon, and then he mentioned to me if only it wasn't so difficult to buy. Now that was a bit of a challenge to me because I was like how can it be difficult to buy something? Surely it's it's not that bad. So it took me about an hour or two to figure out and actually go through the entire process of buying. It was a lot more complicated than it should be, but I put a couple bucks in and you know, a couple days after that, it doubled and then it tripled. 
and I freaked out and I was like, mate, we gotta take some money out. Like, this is volatile, it's gonna drop again. So I took out about half of the rand value of what I put in and then it started fluctuating and dropping and rising again. Eventually, you know, we had like 500% return on the money we'd put in, which was insane. So about a day or two ago, I put in a significant amount more over the last 48 hours, it's been a bit of a roller coaster. The money went up to astronomical amounts that I could never even imagine, you know, realistic returns going. And then today it took a bit of a dive. So if you saw the bit in the beginning of this video where I was freaking out a little bit, I used that dive to buy more of this coin. For those of you that aren't familiar with SafeMoon, it's a very new currency. Um, and they have a slightly different way of doing things. There's a, on every transaction, there's essentially a 10%, I wouldn't call it a penalty fee, but like a 10% tax. Half of that tax essentially gets redistributed to everyone else on the network. Included in that everyone else on the network is a burn wallet that currently has 40% of all the currency. That burn wallet should essentially mean that the currency has gone from the network. I'm still trying to figure it out, but essentially the idea is a portion of the money gets redistributed to everyone and a portion of the money gets burnt. Then of that 10% tax, they take the remaining 5% and they put it into a liquidity pool. Also something that I don't fully understand yet, but the basic concept behind liquidity is to be able to trade efficiently on a market, there needs to be sort of a, a buffer of available tradable assets. So if I'm buying 2 million safe moon, I need to be able to buy it from somewhere or else I need to go and find someone who has 2 million safe moon and they're willing to sell it to me for that exact price. And that's just not efficient. Now, after the returns that we were seeing last night, things were looking great. And then today it dove. It took about a 40 to 50% knock during certain points of the day compared to the previous day. And I chose that opportunity to buy. Now the thing is, the reason it dove so much is because there was a lot of bad press, especially on Twitter. A lot of people trying to say that the founders of this cryptocurrency are kind of just taking that kind of burn fuel, that liquidity money, and they're just hoping to run away with it at some point and they're just gonna make serious profits off of it. I don't think that's the case. The Safe Moon, you can go, if you Google Safe Moon and you Google the Safe Moon AMAs, you'll see that the big shots in the company are having honest live streams um, on YouTube and on Twitch, uh, talking to people about their plans for the company. We know who these people are, we know what they look like. My honest opinion is that they probably not gonna blatantly steal um, hundreds of thousands or millions of people with, with hundreds of thousands of thousands of people's money and just run away with it. They're either gonna go to jail or be at, in some sort of risk, whether it's career risk or personal risk. I mean, I'm sure some people have put a significant amount of their savings into this and losing that wouldn't make them very happy. It could be a sham. These guys could run off with everything. This thing could fail completely. It is what it is. But for now, it's been super fun. It's been an insane learning process because once you have some skin in the game, you tend to watch things super closely. And you're paying attention to announcements and you're paying attention to tweets and you're looking at the technical documentation, really trying to understand what's going on. And I think that's incredibly valuable. So I know this video is probably getting a bit long and boring for a lot of people. So I'm gonna wrap it up here with some of my thoughts, my expectations and some of my plans for the future, both in the mining space and in the cryptocurrency space in general. So first of all, regarding SafeMoon, I'm super excited to see what it's gonna do. I've put a little bit more money in today. I'm hoping for big things from this uh, AMA session this evening. Uh, we'll see what they have to say. They, they seem to make a big promise and they seem like pretty legit guys. So let's hope that's the case. Then on the mining side, I'm thinking that I want even more than I've already got. 
Now the problem with the mining is, so I'm mining Ethereum at the moment. Ethereum profits were incredibly high in the beginning of the year and they've kind of been fluctuating and coming down a bit and a lot of the speculation is that you know those profits are going to go way down after something called EIP 1559 which I'm not going to get into in this video but essentially what it means is the rewards that miners are going to earn are probably going to decrease quite a bit but Ethereum is doing it to make the currency more valuable which in my mind means the currency is going to be worth more so the actual currency that I'm earning from mining is going to be worth more hopefully that offsets it a little bit and the main reason I'm not too worried about digging into this too much is if I buy good quality computer hardware and I look after it that hardware will either have a use for me outside of mining if it completely fails or if I really need to I can sell it for a decent amount of money so if I can make half of the money that I put into graphics cards back from mining I can get the other half back either from using the card or from selling it so I'm not too bothered um, I'll probably release a video soon about potentially choosing a new graphics card or if I choose not to do it why I choose not to do it so stay tuned I'm gonna put links in the description for everything I've spoken about um, Hive on Pool Low Miner, Hive OS, Phoenix Miner, uh, Spark Pools, and Coinbase. Check them out. And I'll put links in the description for Safe Moon. So go do your own research. The cryptocurrency space is so exciting right now. And I said in the first video, this is not going to be a cryptocurrency channel. These are not cryptocurrency tutorials, but this is the stuff that's exciting me right now. So this is the content I'm creating right now. Uh, so if you are interested in this, if you have any other pressing questions that you think would be a good idea to make more videos about, let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like. If you enjoy the channel, subscribe. Thanks for watching. Cheers.